23andMe data was found being sold online, Linux was hit with a glibc vulnerability, and Curl schedules a security patch. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. <laughs> Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for October 10th, 2023. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Let's go ahead and jump right into the news this week. The genetic profiling service called 23andMe had user data stolen. Reports have surfaced that an unknown entity had scraped private user data from 23andMe's website and offered it for sale on a cybercrime forum. The stolen data supposedly includes sensitive information like origin estimations, health data, photos, and identification details. The 23andMe officials confirmed that some private data is indeed up for sale, indicating unauthorized access to individual accounts. The data scraping technique was used, essentially reassembling small pieces of information available to users. These attackers gained access to accounts configured for a DNA relative feature, allowing users to find potential relatives. However, 23andMe has stated that this is not actually a data security incident within their systems, but a result of recycled login credentials from other breached platforms. Of course, we all know that you should not be using the same username and password combination across multiple platforms. The stolen data includes profile and account ID numbers, display names, gender, birth year, ancestral heritage results, and more. The compromise affects those who opted into the DNA relative feature, showcasing unexpected privacy consequences of certain platform features. Now, what's crucial here is that the threat actor scraped data from the DNA relative matches, making it even more concerning. So to protect your account, 23andMe offers two-factor authentication, which I highly recommend enabling in your account settings if you haven't already. This incident highlights the importance of strong, distinct passwords for every single online account that you use and refraining from password reuse. Since pass keys are not generally available on all online sites yet, hopefully it happens in the near future, using 2FA should be a standard practice. Genetic information is very sensitive, and breaches like this emphasize the need for heightened security measures. Due to a lack of legislation around online DNA services, I don't necessarily recommend using DNA sequencing services or 23andMe type of websites with the understanding that many people do sign up to find lost family members, family medical history, or to answer questions. I have some urgent news about a new Linux vulnerability, which is called Looney Tunables, which is tracked as CVE 2023-4911. A local attacker could potentially gain root privileges by exploiting a buffer overflow problem in the GNUC library's id.so dynamic loader. Now, the GNUC library, which a lot of people call glibc, that's what I will call it in this video, is a crucial component in most Linux-based systems, providing essential functionality for program execution. The dynamic loader within glibc is responsible for program preparation and execution, making it a critical part of Linux systems. Now, Qualys Threat Research Unit discovered this vulnerability, and it was introduced back in April 2021 with the release of glibc 2.34. The flaw impacts major Linux distributions like Fedora, Ubuntu, and Debian, making it a very serious concern for system administrators. Attackers can trigger the vulnerability using the glibc tunables environment variable, and it does not require complex attacks or user interaction. It is a high severity flaw with a CVSS score of 7.8, posing significant risk to affected Linux distros. Glibc is used across tons of different distros, and the buffer overflow attack is very easy to perform, which can be problematic even though Qualys is withholding the current exploit code for the time being. What's alarming is that proof-of-concept exploits are already surfacing online from a variety of places, 
services, showcasing the urgency to act promptly. System administrators need to patch their systems to ensure the security and integrity of their platforms. Several POCs have been shared online and they have been confirmed to work. Now we have seen pr similar privilege escalation flaws in Linux recently, and Looney Tunables is the latest addition to that list. This issue highlights the critical need for timely patching and of course, proactive security measures. Biggest of shout outs to our Patreon supporters and their fur babies for making this show possible since we don't have ads on the show at all other than supporting ThreatWire through Patreon. Now, do you want to continue supporting ThreatWire? You can check out patreon.com slash ThreatWire for all the details, all the perks, and how to become a member. I am excited to announce some new news. The ThreatWire Patreon will be continuing under Hack 5. Yay! So check it out. Check out all the information on the ThreatWire page and learn more. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story all about Curl. Now we need to chat about Curl. The maintainers have just released an advisory pointing to two vulnerabilities, a high severity one and a low severity one. These are tracked as CVE 2023-38545 and CVE 2023-38546. So what is Curl? Well, it's a powerful open source command line tool used by developers and system administrators to transfer for data using the URL syntax. It supports a wide range of protocols like SSL, TLS, HTTP, FTP, and more. Libcurl, on the other hand, powers curl, providing essential URL transfer functionality for applications, making it a crucial tool for developing interconnected applications. Now let's talk about those curl vulnerabilities. The first one, CVE 2023-38545, that's the high severe Severity issue that affects both libcurl and curl, while CVE 2023-38546 is a low severity flaw affecting only libcurl. The exact version ranges impacted are not disclosed yet to prevent premature problem identification, but make sure to mark your calendars for October 11th when the details will be unveiled at 600 UTC. Organizations need to act swiftly, inventory and scan all the systems utilizing curl and libcurl, preparing to identify potentially vulnerable versions once the details do come out. Updating to curl version 8.4.0 upon that release is going to be crucial to safeguard against these vulnerabilities. Now these will be fixed in the forthcoming update set to release on October 11th, 2023 at time of recording. Right now the details are vague though, so make sure to stay tuned to the Hack5 channel because you are going to see a new face on on Wednesday, you might have saw a teaser on Twitter giving us all the information on this upcoming patch. Hmm. I'm Shannon Morse. Remember to stay vigilant, stay secure, and I will see you on the internet.